Hello and welcome to Indie Apocalypse Radio, your premier home for indie video games. No, wait, it's your home of the unmarketable. I gotta stick to my slogans. We got a jam-packed show for you today, so we're just gonna get right into it. We got like five, we got half of Chonkers HQ in the office, the digital office that is. And first here, up at the plate, is Angela D. Cutscene Illustrated UI Arts. Angela, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Glad to have um, you. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got my all, all of my roll right. <laughs> I have this all on here. It's on my stream. I'm looking straight at it. I am prepared. I am ready to go. You may know this whole team, this whole the whole HQ. I forgot that part of it. From issue 18, the most recent issue of Indie Park with, with Home Run Miko, which you can see up in like the... the um, jumbotron area i put it up there i made a baseball diamond because it's baseball themed it's a whole thing so angela important question i gotta ask you right off the bat that i gotta ask every guest of indie apocalypse radio which is um oh yeah you, go for it how did you hear about indie apocalypse how did i hear about indie apocalypse yes um uh, my great producer actually michael <laughs> Uh, out about it. Perfect. Well, we will we will follow up with Michael and really drill into how he heard about Indie Apocalypse. But in the meantime, um, so cutscene. You've got this. Is, I think this is the first time where I've had a team that is like very like a team with a lot of people with very specific jobs. So I gotta. <laughs> What? So, you you all did this for a school, right? Like, this is your capstone project, as they call it. Yes. What? Okay, so, as someone who's who went to school when game design programs didn't exist, what is a capstone project? Um, so, a capstone project is a senior project um, where it's a nine-production cycle of a group Oh, sorry, you were saying? No, 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 keep going, keep going. Yeah, a group of students who work together. Uh, let's win tears. Yeah. Now, do you get um, to... I'm sorry? Do you, get to, do you get to pick your, like, teams going forward? Is this something that gets, like, decided in freshman year or almost... Um, I, I believe, I think it's uh, at the start of the senior year... Okay. Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm actually a uh, a collaborator, so they picked me up in the six months. So okay. So I, you, yeah. So I actually started. Like, <laughs> you're a very late addition to the project, then. I am, but not so late though. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, but in like, yeah, in the in the scheme of yeah. game <laughs> game design, six months is a bit of the ways in. Uh, yep. <laughs> So, as so coming into in the apocalypse. So, what did you now? Did, are you in the game design track in that case, or are you in like more of a general arts program? Uh, more of a general arts program. Okay. Yes. So you just like well, I guess I will do game design or game art on the side here to do cutscenes and UI. Yeah. Art. It's actually one of my uh, biggest passions, actually. Okay. So, yeah. But you did it like, the, the smart way, where it's if you can't get into video games, <laughs> you can still do other art. You don't have to. Like... Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. You're actually one of first, well, one of the people who actually got that right. Yeah. yeah. You're not but... in such a specific field that it turns out anyone can mm -hmm. hire artists. <laughs> All right, so so you as as you one of your main passions, um, what what's a good video game, Angela? Or what's what's a game that you oh. like? Oh, let me tell you, I actually one of my favorite games uh, up to date uh, is actually Hotel Awakening. <laughs> 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 but, 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the reason why is because I just really like the mechanics and the puzzle pieces. Um, uh, I actually learned a lot of the game design side of that game. It is also one reason why um, I also really adore our game too, because it's also a puzzle game as well. And I like to uh, put the connection as well together, even though they're very like different. Yeah. Wait, wait, so wait. What was the game you said? Wait, it's just nice to know that. I... Oh, the link awakening. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I recent... thought. Yeah, the most recent one. Yeah. Yeah, like like oh, the I recent. The soundtrack is so good. Are you talking like the recent like 3D kind of reimagining? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, I haven't played that, but I to um. You haven't played. No, well I I played the original, in like the. Oh back yeah! Oh my gosh! It's very. Yes. Yes. Game Boy, backseat of yes. a car. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That, that's how, actually how I started too back in the days. <laughs> And then I was like, oh my god, they made a remake? Oh my god. <laughs> I need to check them out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's got that weird, like, that, I guess they tried to, like, they, it's interesting that they try to, like, how often they try to, like, make Zelda look like different Zeldas, you know? Uh-huh. And yeah, they, I actually saw some of the most concept. Yeah, oh, sorry, you were saying? <laughs> no, I was. You can continue. Number one rule, if I if you want to keep talking, just keep talking. I'll stop talking. <laughs> No, no, you were saying like how they're like doing the different designs of the Zelda. Yeah. Um, I actually saw some of the most recent concept designs of the, what they were trying to make for the new um, Awakening redesign. I was like, wow, they actually thought like a different one to make appealing for everyone else. And they were going most likely to, uh, they were leaning towards like the older version, the Game Boy Advance. Oh, no, yeah. like, like something close to it. So I was like, wow, right, I kind of geek out on designs and stuff. <laughs> Oh, sorry, yeah. but not sorry. No, no, it, it has like it's, yeah. it's interesting to take a thing that's like very, very, very small in terms of like this amount of scale that you can fit on a Game Boy screen. It's like, well, how do we make this look? Yeah. This look the same, but with like high res 3D assets. Yeah. And she make them flat yeah, and cute been, looking. Yeah, must have been really tough, but I like I really like how it turned out. Yeah. yeah. No, I've maybe I should. I don't. I should maybe I should play that. I, <laughs> I liked that game, but also I haven't. Yeah, you should. I have to like hold yeah. something in my hand and <laughs> sit oh, around what and play. Oh, kind of you play? I'm oh, sorry. No. Uh, but I don't have a. Uh, uh, wait, is it? On the, I'm sure, anyway. I'm thinking about 3ds's. I'm like, can I find a way to play a 3ds uh -huh. on my TV? Probably, but. <laughs> uh. So Zelda, I mean, this game, so Homer and Miko, cutscene illustrator, tell me about the game and, because this has um, cutscenes in it. No, wait, I, I'm bad at, um, I'm trying to like think of a, a, a quick enough question to be like, so now when you came into it as like, was like character design already done or did you get a hand in that as well? Because cutscenes involve a lot of, you know, character art, as it were. Uh, I, there was a lot of concept ideas already, and there was a also a storyboard artist as well. Oh, Every, nice. Yeah, so they had like a whole storyboard already, and I was just following them. I talked a lot and collaborated a lot with her, and communicated a lot with her uh, teammates. Mostly with the, um, my art director and then um, the storyboard artist. It was also the, uh, it was all my game design. Okay. Uh, game designer, so that we can like um, capture what we want the story to look like through yeah. my illustration. And I also have to make a my art style to be cohesive uh, with the rest of the game uh, design as well. Yeah. Wait, what is... Sorry. Um. So no, I got I got tagged at something which does not happen very often. I got taken by I got taken aback. Um. But I was letting you talk, and then you caught me off guard when you stopped talking. Um. But no, that's. 
Oh no, I was going to say interesting, but I never. I hate when people say that's interesting, even if it is interesting, because it always sounds condescending. So I gotta. But Angela, we're actually at the end of our time here, of our ten minutes we have. I was, oh yeah. Yes, we eventually we'll get the whole rowdy Chonkers crew in here, but right now to talk to each of you and to honestly to learn all your individual voices to the best of my ability. I'll bring you out one at a time. So I gotta ask Angela before you go, what is if you were if you were on the baseball field, which position would you like to play? Um I I, I would be the, the pitcher. <laughs> you want you can't okay, you can't be the pitcher, I'm the pitcher. <laughs> what the <laughs> I'm I'm the host of the show, and I decided that I was the pitcher because it's in the center of the screen. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess I'll I'll just be the person with the ball. Okay, I will make you the person with the ball. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> thank, thank you for being here, Angela. We're gonna go on break. We'll see you all. Oh yeah, of course. Thank you. We'll see you all in like thirty-nine seconds. Welcome back to Indie Blockables Radio. That was Melt Banana with a teaspoon of salt. We are here with, to really, to get to the bottom of these important questions that I have with the producer of Own Run Miko and sound designer, Michael yeah. Sim. Hello, Michael. What's up? How you doing? I'm ready for this at bat. Please don't throw any curveballs at me. Um, I throw throw heaters right down the center of the plate. <laughs> I can take that. I'm All looking right. for nonstop home runs over the green monster. <laughs> um, I'll head it straight to Angela in the corner. I got an important question. <laughs> She's over there at the green monster. It makes it very easy. Um, do you know what the green monster is? Um, in a literal sense, no. Um, I okay. think this is leading into something. No, it's it's a baseball thing. It's 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 in Boston. It's in Fenway Park. It's a big wall. Oh, <laughs> they call the Green Monster. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I got to ask you, how did you hear about Indie Apocalypse? Yeah, so towards the end of like the school year, um, I already had in mind back in like March. I talked to one of my TAs and they were recommending like, oh, you should submit to like festivals and whatnot. Like you never know where your project will go. So I started looking into a bunch of like festivals, game jams on itch because I've done game jams before and I've seen Indie Apocalypse before um, while I was like browsing the jams and I just like never felt like I had something to submit. So this time I was like, all right, there's a new edition coming out right around when we finish um, the school year. So might as well try and see what happens. It might as and as well indeed that you did. And I was very surprised to see like a full like student project like with a whole team and it's like wow. Very impressed with people will routinely submit to this thing. And as yeah. we all know, Indie Apocalypse is clearly a stepping stone into all festivals, you know. This is your one-way trip to IndieCade, from what I know. What? <laughs> it's not. I'm sorry, Michael. I don't want to burst your bubble. It's your one-way trip to $2 a person. No, that's not it's right. Okay. You got $4. That's that's more than uh, we would have had before. So <laughs> That's like a pizza night, you know? Yeah. That all adds up to maybe like one boba delivery. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes. <laughs> Once you factor in DoorDash's taste. Yeah. <laughs> DoorDash's taste, those guys. I've I've really turned the corner. I, I think I was never too into them anyway, but I've especially turned the corner and to be like, I know I would rather just not order because I don't want to pay like $40 for a thing of boba, as you would say. But no, I have yeah. a important question for you and as a producer now this is something i this is a field i learned to respect once during global game jam where i i think i accidentally became a producer but (laughs) what goes into being a producer especially like at at a like entry student level from 
general entry student level. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess going back to during the school year, um, it's it's interesting because I always think about like, would I have been able to do it if it wasn't remote? Because I because as student like. I wanted producing to be the only thing I focus on. Yeah. Um, but like I had other commitments, like I was part of a student org. I had a, like an internship and like two other classes. Um, and I remember an alumni who did the senior capstone before me. I asked him like, Hey, I'm thinking about being a producer and like doing a bunch of other stuff at the same time. And he was like, I don't know, man, I don't, I don't know if you can do it. I don't think you can be producer if you're doing other stuff at the same time because it's gonna take a lot of time. Right. And but I was like, well, that's what I wanted to do. So it was a lot of um, hours, a lot of a lot of man hours, just. Um, and going back to like the remote environment, like since I'm not on campus and I don't have to commute, and I like I, I'm thankful I get to like be with my family, so they take care of the like food yes. and stuff. Right. And so it's like not having to worry about that. I was able to put more time into like producing. So it's just checking in. We have a Discord server and like it was on my mind like every day. Um, taking time to just like talk to all nine other members of the team yeah, that's... when I can and just like build relationships outside of the game because. Um, <laughs> on on like a side note, they Angela J is the preacher of the Bible for Final Fantasy fourteen. And okay. um last night it was nice. Just like I've been very out of it. The rest of the team is pretty into it. So oh. just hanging out with them yesterday and playing. That was nice. So little things like that yeah. keep me going to put in those like hours. Listen, I've gotten very into Final Fantasy fourteen over this last year it's become a daily ritual of mine to just because like it's like what's stopping me from having every character class level 80 it's nothing nothing but time you know definitely especially but listen we're not here to talk about final fantasy 14 or at least not with a, a, an outsider <laughs> uh, and, and final fantasy 14 amateur um <laughs> What do what what do you play to get a sense of what you pref what's your um, preference? I feel like this is a, a I a, guess a Rorschach test. I think it was influenced by not the game. Yeah. Um, I wanted to be the healer for our team when we play together, so okay. I chose Conjure. So yeah, that is you. Yes, that is a specific, very producer, I suppose, because you can sit in the back and kind of do work oh my <laughs> <laughs> but also be the linchpin of the entire operation because if you sit around doing nothing you're like well now we're all dead I suppose. <laughs> yeah i totally didn't let our party wipe yesterday <laughs> perfect perfect that's the beauty the beautiful thing as someone who has been leveling his tanks and just like i'm just gonna pull this whole dungeon because I don't care. <laughs> There's nothing but respect. Much like I think a uh, game developer was just like, I'm going to implement 40 new features. And you're like, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. What if you did one instead? Yeah, we definitely had a whole giant wish list that built up throughout the the yeah. initial nine months. Um, but we took, after after like graduation, we were able to take like a one month break and now we're like back to it. So we're we're finally hitting those like extra features that we yeah. didn't, didn't get to. And conventions are just starting to spin back up. It's it's like it's perfect timing, like they were planning for it, you know? Yeah. Like we finally it took nine months, but um nine out of ten of us finally like met each other in person a wow. few weeks ago. So. What a that's actually something that is going to be increasingly bizarre for myself having done this and f met what is it like 180 people or something hey. to potentially see people in person 
is going to be a weird experience for myself. What is it like meeting people for the first time after like, I guess if you used um, cameras, it's not as weird, I think. Yeah. Um, it was, it was interesting. I think we like shared the feelings that it didn't feel like the first time we're seeing each other. I already knew like two, two of them our team yeah. beforehand. Um, but we all gathered in San Francisco cause we were like mostly in proximity to each other and oh, everyone sounded exactly how they sound. Um, <laughs> there were some height differences I wasn't expecting. <laughs> I I think that is pro actually probably one of the most shocking things. It's something you can't tell from even if you are on webcams all the time. Yeah. Just, because people don't like, here's my full body webcam just so you know how tall I am. Yeah, exactly. They don't like keep a banana for scale next to them the whole time. Oh. Yeah. Now, was it yeah, taller or shorter than you were expecting? Um. <laughs> You don't have to say who. This can be pro this can be anonymous between you and me. No, they know, they know. Uh, shorter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speaking of shorter, one of the positions in baseball is shortstop. Oh Michael, yes. If you had to pick a position in baseball that you would like to play, what would it be? Um, I'm down to be like, I'm looking for a coach on the side, but okay. I don't see one. No, there's you can, I can you, there's like a third base coach. This guy standing over here. Yeah, He's the guy that's saying, run faster, please. <laughs> you can be that Someone guy. Someone nail my arm. Come on. Yeah, you can make that steal. He's one, you get, how good, Michael, how great are you like, kicking dirt when you're upset? Um, I don't want to like mess up my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect answer. Michael, thank you for being here. I'll see you again later. All right, uh, thank you. We're going to go to break. We're going to be back in about 32 seconds. Um, with our next guest. Hello and welcome back to Indiepocalypse Radio. That was Sonic Boom 6 with an ode to DIY promoters. Um, I wanted to keep on Stop After Current because I just put them all into one playlist because I had uh, like seven songs. Anyway, we're here with our next guest, Eli, a, the gameplay designer and composer. Hello, Eli. How you doing? I am doing great. Great oh, to be here. Perfect. Great to have you here. Now, now, gameplay designer and um, composer, those are um, an odd... Are they, I'm trying to... I think they're an odd pairing, but I don't know if they're an odd pairing. Would you say they're an odd pairing having done them? I think that um, in in the entire industry, I don't think there's a single gameplay designer who hasn't written all the music for their game. I think okay. that's industry standard. It happens at every game. See, um, I think I could I could see it being a a little a little strange, maybe. Um, but it, it was just what I happened to have skills in. I actually came onto the team. Yeah. As a as the composer. Okay. Um, because oh. I have a bit of a musical background. Um, my uncle's a a jazz professor. Um, and then once I got there, I was like, oh, we don't have a gameplay designer. We were just hoping to, like, come together through a hive mind osmosis yeah. and have gameplay appear. And I was like, hey, I can just head up, like, the gameplay design. Um, and after uh, taking control and starting a coup and ousting, you know, anyone else who wanted to try to take my power, I ended up being the gameplay designer. But listen, that's... I hear that's a bad way to go about doing work in the gameplay design in the game sphere. From what I hear, people are real uh -huh. upset about that kind of um, uh -huh. that kind of attitude. But you know, it's what they teach you in school. So what can I say about it? You know, it's the predominant philosophy. Um, I was I accidentally kicked out my wire there for a second. I was like, just he took really he really took plowing over what I'm saying to heart. <laughs> but in fact, that was my mistake. Uh, yeah, so, one second, I am. Sorry, I was very thirsty. My mouth was dying. It was much like the pit of an infield full of dirt. Oh, um, we're getting metaphors now? Nice. <laughs> what's your, Eli, what's your favorite baseball metaphor? My favorite baseball metaphor? Yes. Um. Real or imagined? 
I I can't think of a specific one, but I think that um, have have you seen the anime Fooly Cooly? I have, yes. There's a lot of like allusions to baseball and like the things that they do, and I won't get into specifics about Fooly Cooly. Yeah. But you know, there's there's definitely a lot of metaphors going on there in terms of uh, hitting things out of the park and uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, home runs. Yeah, Reaching. home runs. I've been seeing a lot of Fooly Cooly lately because turns out if like there's maybe it's just i don't know what it says about me or the people making them but a lot of the music i'm looking for for my amvs for amv night there's a lot of fooly cooly in it it's like a very i think it's like maybe the perfect anime for that sort of thing i i think it, it probably is but it's also like it's it's i i see so many like youtube like video essayists who are like Pooly Cooly will just like show up in their essays and it's like it had nothing to do with it but they just wanted to talk about Pooly Cooly it's like weird yeah I think it has if we can go for an anime sidebar for a moment I guess listen this is there are no sidebars in the show it's all one bar and we're just coasting along it um I think it's because it has yeah kind of kind of touches on everything you want out of something when you want a certain vibe it's got coming of age it's got frenetic action it looks cool it's got it rock music cool. all the things that make up life um so so it so as the gameplay designer are you the person who came up with the thing where you can throw the ball to your clone um well in terms of like coming up with the ideas yeah. um i think to me, this is actually something that I, I feel like I learned because this is my first time as like a role on a team yeah. doing like a more official design. Um, I think one of the things I realized was that ideas aren't just like you come up with them and they blurt out and they yeah. just become a thing. It's like you have this tiny nucleus that doesn't even really look like an idea. And the tiny nucleus in this case was just one of our programmers just gave uh, our main character a bat, right, to swing. Right. And it was just like hey, that looks funny. And then it was like, hey, couldn't we like be a little more serious about this and like make mechanics around that? Um, and then from there, it was just like a process of like a lot of work of like, okay, well, what can you do in baseball? Well, you can throw things, you can like hit with the bat. And like we listed all like the actions possible. It was it was a collaborative process with the programming team as well. Um, and when, once you list out everything, some of the things kind of just fall into place. And it's like, well, this has to be this way. Um, and some of the things are like, you know, when you're looking at um, what designs would make, you know, things interesting or more fun, you kind of just follow a, a process. Yeah, that I just I asked because that was I didn't realize you could do that. And then when I did it, it made a lot of sense to me. And I, it kind of like blew my mind wide open in terms of like, oh, it's a it's a beautiful marriage of mechanic and design and like aesthetic and uh, what's the word I'm looking for like not lore but you know it fits into the feel the vibe of the whole game why wouldn't you be able people throw balls to each other that's part of baseball yeah I think that's the key thing it's like the why wouldn't I be able to do this in yeah. our early play tests we had a lot of situations where it would be like hey why can't I do this or why can't I do that and I think you know maybe some people would look at that and be like well of course you can't do that like I'm not going to make it all the mechanics you want. I made this game, right? But it's like, yeah. well, no, what the person expects to be able to do, if you don't comment on that as a designer, you don't necessarily have to do it. But if you don't at least comment on it, yeah. it tells your player like, hey, I don't actually know what you're thinking in your head. I don't know what what's going on with you. I, I just made like this hunk of metal and you can have fun with it, but it doesn't really you know, do what you expect. Yes. Yeah, someone has to play a lot of games that come that feel i get that feeling a lot of like well i why does this thing i want to do not work it makes a lot of sense in terms of the design of the game but for some reason in this particular situation it just simply does not work and i'm like i guess that comes far from being like a lot of people work alone so you don't have like that second or third person to bounce off of mm-hmm so I imagine it helps a lot to have like different people playing the game and how like how often would you like play as a whole group? Um, I don't think we did play as, as a, I guess. 
Yeah, as as a group, there weren't that many play tests. I think we tried to like have a build every week for the team to be able to play. Yeah. Um, and I think some of the team members took that very seriously. Michael was like on it every week. Michael was like, "I'm I'm playing the build." Uh, you know, by the end of it, he was like a speedrunner for the game because he was like getting so good at like passing around and and like solving the puzzles really fast. So Michael was always on it with the you know play testing. I play tested a little. Uh, some of our artists, I won't name names, but some of our artists had not played until like after the quarter was over, and it was like, <laughs> what? How did that happen? <laughs> people, so people get busy. They they're making art. How, how do you think all that art got in the game, <laughs> Eli? Huh? It was osmosis. I thought the art just just trickled in, you know, <laughs> built it in. I think artists just wake up one day and the art fairy visits them and there's art under their pillow. <laughs> yeah, and then they just take the art out from under the pillow and hand it in. And yeah. That's how it works. Thank you, Art Fairy, for this USB stick full of JPEGs. I will <laughs> pass it on to my team. But, no, it's, yeah. I think now I wonder working as a team... I guess working as a full team, would you would realize, because I think sometimes people are getting into game design, especially if they want to try forming teams and don't realize how much work everybody has to do. It's not just, there actually isn't an art fairy. We were joking about that earlier. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh. But I guess in working together, it's easier to realize, like, oh... I think that there were some issues with that. It wasn't all smooth sailing yeah. in terms of like knowing how much work certain things are. Right. Like as someone who doesn't do art, I don't have any clue how much work animation takes until yeah. you know, my art our art team would come back to us and be like, "This is what you're asking us to do is like impossible, <laughs> right?" right. Um, and so that that was kind of an issue with that. Um, also, you know, with um, our cutscene illustrator. I think, you know, we had an idea going in about, like, how much to do in terms of the cutscenes. And, like, I mean, we decided on, I think it's, like, 20, 25 panels or something ridiculous like that of, like, fully illustrated, you know, cutscene panels at the yeah. beginning of the game. And it's, like, we could have condensed that. We kind of went with the first storyboard we got, and we were just, like, all right, hand it off. Go get your artist fairy. And it was, like, <laughs> kind of dumb. Yeah. We should have had, like, a lot more, like... Um, serious communication about how much work it was going to be um, yeah. trying to figure it out. Turns out 25 panels at like a high resolution is a lot of work. Yeah. But speaking, Eli, of a lot of work, the game of baseball is a lot of work, you know? And if you were... It's, it's big effort, yeah. They, they sit, I mean, it looks like a lot of sitting around, much like game development, sitting around in a field waiting for something to happen. But mm -hmm. they put a lot of effort into it. And now, if you were to play baseball, where would you like to play? Where would you prefer to mount yourself on the field? Um, I think I'll go with um, uh, the guy uh, audience in the audience. Okay. Uh, he's up on the top left. He's got a yellow shirt. Um, I think I, he's he's got a he's got a blow dart gun I think and I think okay. he's gonna like shoot someone with like a sleeping dart in the middle of the game so he's part of the game he's in play okay. yes I always forget about the new rules they add to baseball to spice it up the new patch yeah I think they renamed it baseball somewhere along the way but uh, I don't bring, I, I I looked at baseball and it seems I it's too there's too much baseball at this point I can't get into it I'm sorry baseball um well Eli thank you for being here. Oh, you'll be back not too long. Cool. In the meantime, in the meantime, I mean 42 seconds from now, we'll be back with our next guest. Goodbye. Hello, and welcome back to Indie Apocalypse Radio. That was DJ Shadow with Why Hip Hop Sucks in 96. We are here with the next guest of our show, art lead and animator, Angela J. Or are we doing what we refer to as a pinch hit. Um, let's see. We are going to instead do one of these where I go like this and then I go like. Boop, boop. Beep, beep, boop, beep. Oh, no, wait, wait. You're here. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. I was trying to hydrate so I don't dehydrate. 
Oh, no, that's an important thing. I've been trying to sneak it in here and there as well. Angela, welcome to the show. Hello, hello. I'm sorry for my absence. I no, became that's a fine. hydro homie today, so needless to say, I gotta keep up with my tradition of glug glug. No, we here on the New Pocos Radio support the drinking of water. As someone who primarily drinks mostly water, I have my a large jug of water next to me. Yeehaw, let's get let's get that hydration going. It's not a smart it's not one of those fun bottles that like lights up when it tells you you need to drink or something. <laughs> it does it doesn't have a cap on it. Sometimes bugs fly into it and I get upset. Oh no. You could put a tissue over it. <laughs> I do. I have a I have a um a cop a PlayStation two copy of RPG Maker two on my desk and I put it over it when I need to leave it alone. Wow. That's one way to go about it. And it works well enough for me. Hell yeah. Uh, Can I say that? Heck yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, maybe. I don't know if we allow such such harsh language on this show. I'm oh, going to no. I'm gonna have to remember to tag it explicit when I upload it as a podcast. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> then we won't be able to get, I don't know, ad revenue. I, I don't know marking things explicit. Wait, what happened to... I lost an Angela. Uh, sorry, ignore me. Uh, so art lead. So art lead is a um, a broad term. What does art lead mean? In the simplest well, terms. There she's back. Well, I guess you are the the main artist. You kind of decide, like, you know, like what should, what kind of art should be like in the game, and like help the other artists with the direction so that okay. you guys. Oh, you know, make something that's kind of cohesive. Yeah. Make so, sure the game looks, you know, what's that word? Make sure the game looks like the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure it's all um, consistent. Yes, that word. Ooh, bring farty. No, that's fine. Um, I am no stranger to like my brain exhaling and leaving <laughs> me nothing left inside. Um, but. Yeah, so that seems like because th I think of an art lead sometimes, especially with like in animation where you you know peop multiple people are, go are going to have to draw the same things and it's going to have to look similar enough, you know. Yeah, I think that's what leads people towards like certain styles. Like you, you'll see periodically different like predominant styles in animation, much like your um. Fuck, what, oops. Oh, I said a worse one. Um, <laughs> what's the Cal Arts is what I was thinking of. Yes. The oh, yeah, I've heard of Cal Arts. I don't I unfortunately do not know too much about it because I was like, oh, I do not know if I had this much passion to pursue Cal Arts. <laughs> no, right. You, you don't have that much. Now, did you are you are you coming from like a, a desire for like an animation background or an art background and you also do animation? It's more of the art background, and then I also do animation. I feel like I definitely have a lot that I want to try out yeah. and want to tackle and just, you know, just explore. But at last, there's only so many hours in the day, yeah. and we also have like responsibilities. So all I can do is, you know, watch Netflix and YouTube, <laughs> and hopefully that you know some of that knowledge, uh, mitosis. Yeah into me <laughs> right right yeah listen it takes a lot of time to actually sit down and like work on stuff it's, sometimes you just want to sit down and you're like well what if i watch youtube instead and i think about it next thing you know you go down the youtube rabbit hole and then you suddenly watch a tutorial on how to make minecraft beads out of pearl or beads <laughs> what is not not saying that's what happened but no yeah. no no and so what's the youtube hole you are most susceptible to Oh, that is a good question because my YouTube is just full of random things that just yeah. pop up and I just click on it and then next thing you know, I'm three hours in and I am watching, you know, story time videos. Okay, so, so you just kind of let the algorithm take the wheel. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't, the algorithm doesn't work very well and there's nothing much I can do, but, you know, just search up music that I usually listen to and just let it go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, because it's. I feel like, much like one's thing that I question asked earlier, 
that had that had a uh, <laughs> Rorschachian in quality. I feel like some people's YouTube holes say a lot about them that they don't intend it to say. I can see that. Uh, I know definitely a lot of people I know uh, have been in the VTuber hole lately. And I don't know too much about it, but... Okay, so I... <laughs> Never mind. There goes my follow-up question. I need someone to teach me about VTubers. I don't know too much about it, but I know that some friends uh, recently became VTubers. Yeah, you so can... So they've been kind of going. Everyone can become a V. My impression is that... It's VTubers are both ways to become YouTubers without having to record your face all the time. And it's also a way to become a YouTuber that people can fire and replace. Oh, goodness. <laughs> because you're I just guess a... VTubing is kind of good. Yeah, because you're just a cartoon, and I can always fire a cart. You can't fire a person and make a new streamer or whatever. But if you're like some third-generation Hatsune Miku-like... I can always fire you and replace you with someone who kind of sounds close enough to you. Let's go fourth generation Hatsune Miku. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Hatsune Miku is an old lady by now. She's, she's, oh, no. she's seen, she's seen her fair time. It's okay. Our, our pop, our favorite pop diva is still going strong in this day and age. Yeah, we love to see a go queen. <laughs> Quite an illustrious pop career, all things considered, for being not a real person. Sometimes uh, we just we just want to look at the JPEGs move <laughs> that gets the serotonin. <laughs> you're, I know you're describing gotcha games, I think. Yeah, well, you know, anything can be a gotcha if you try hard enough, but <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not. Yeah, right. Listen, we can we can all it, the JPEGs feel better when I spent three hundred dollars to get them. You know, I can't relate because I'm mostly a free to play person. Yeah, I listen, I I also do not play gotcha games because they're designed to. No, that's not true. I play the Fire Emblem one sometimes because I like the way the Fire Emblem people look sometimes. Oh, my, uh, Fire Emblem is one of my one of my big faves. I like the. Okay, well. Well, sorry, <laughs> we're we're going that tangent. No, no, no. Let's no. Let's let's talk about Fire Emblem. Where where's you, what's your favorite Fire Emblem? What's your number one Fire Emblem? Oh, this is this is gonna be very like controversial. Okay. Uh, to many people, but I actually really like Fire Emblem Fates okay, quite a then. lot. It does sound like the controversial answer. I thought you were going to say, like, you were like Tharsha 66776. <laughs> no, um, it's really because, I mean, I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, a lot of Fire Emblem fans have seen, like, all the talks about Fates. Like, yeah. a lot of them talk about it kind of poorly, but a lot of them also praise it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's a game that made me very, <clears throat> very happy. And I enjoyed like meeting all the people that played it, and I enjoyed discussing about the game. And and yes, while there are things that we can like criticize about the gameplay, um, I feel like the characters also make up for it. And now, do you like um, it as like a, the Fates is the whole? Because that's the three part one. So do you like it as the whole, or is it just the singular one that is Fates, and not like Birthright or the other one? I actually started with Birthright. Okay. And. While I was playing it, I was like, I mean, don't get me wrong, we're afraid it's pretty, like, easy. <laughs> <laughs> like, all we really do is just, like, route the enemy and just, okay, just go go take out all these enemies on a field, where's the challenge? But at the same time, it's, like, kind of good because I get to just, like, mindlessly relax and just on the, on the battlefield. Yeah. And then story time. And then have the, the Fire Emblem people hang out with each other. Yeah. I mean, I guess I really like looking at their interactions, so I don't really mind it too much. But man, Conquest, like, they really stepped up their puzzle game, and well, <laughs> that that gave me a a ride throughout the levels. Is that also now are the the three? Is it just called Fates collectively? I've never thought about it like that, but I guess it is. 
Um, yeah, I guess it's just like fates. But then if you really want to get into nitty gritty, then you have to go buy like the separate ones. Yeah, because it's Birthright, Conquest, and Fates, right? And oh, oh, the last one is Revelations. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that does make sense that you would call it Fates. Never mind. You're right. What am I talking about? <laughs> it's all good. Is that now? Is was that also your intro to Fire Emblem, or were you are you an old hat at the game? Uh, no. Okay, so I did not start playing Fire Emblem until recently. Yeah. I said recently, but it's been like years. Uh, I actually found out about Fire Emblem because of Smash. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my friend really liked Marf, and oh. I was like, "Who is this blue hair anime boy in yeah in Smash fighting Pikachu?" <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> So from there, I kind of just like looked into the series. I I played a little bit of Shadow Dragons, okay, and I watched my friends play like Ike's game, but I personally have not played it because how expensive it is. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, it's <laughs> it's very. You have to like get a GameCube even, or I guess you get a yeah. Wii. Technically, so you know, I just I just watch the cutscenes on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, that's all you need, I guess, unless you Fire Emblem takes a long time to play. So, what a weird thing when, because when when Marth was first in the game, you could even I feel like Marth was in Smash for like a decade before you could ever play a game with Marth in it in the U.S. Oh my goodness! So everyone was just like, "Who's this? What game is he from? Can we play?" I, we cannot, so we just gotta wait. Yes, who is this weird anime boy? And why is he in here? <laughs> now there's two anime boys. <laughs> That's unheard of. We, well, you know, look at the future. There's, there's more than three anime boys. <laughs> listen, I hear there's too many anime boys in Fire Emblem now. <laughs> or not in Fire Emblem. <laughs> it's, that's where they belong. <laughs> that's where they need to keep them. Um, in Smash, I hear Smash is like 90% anime boys now. And like two anime girls to go with it. I guess Sakurai knows, knows what the people want. <laughs> that's just what Sakurai wants, maybe. He just wants anime. He's like... I like Fire Emblem. If I put enough in, then I can put in Jagen oh, down goodness. the road. <laughs> really bust up the, the old men. I mean, there have been a lot of additions that none of us really predicted, especially that plant from Mario. Yeah. I was like, what? That's a fighter? you got to be kidding me. Hey, he's a classic. He jumps out of the pot and he bites Mario and he's like, Mario doesn't like it. <laughs> Sp yeah. speak speaking of um Mar oh no i lost track of time what a s I really really borked it on this one um but speaking of mario what what's your opinion on mario angela what do you think about the guy you know his I work think ethic his he's, he's definitely a lot more exercised than me Okay, okay. Go around running around, you know, hitting blocks, yeah, throwing yeah. fireballs. Meanwhile, me, I, you know, occasionally I walk around the house. I play Final Fantasy. I work on sprites for Chunkers HQ. <laughs> Perfect. That's, tell me about, before we go, talk about Final Fantasy. Oh, let me, let me tell you about the current, the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV, where you can play through the entirety of Realm Reborn and an award-winning Heaven's Word expansion up to level 60 for free. Uh, tell me all about, like, tell me what would drive a person to, say, spend every day playing main quest queue and leveling queue to raise all of their characters to level 80. Well, do you not MMOs? Do you, like, oh, I love just... That. Is playing with a lot of people. Do you like cat boys? Bunny, like, bunny I'm, girls, bunny boys. I'm, you know, I'm, like, I'm elves. I have a tall lady. Oh yeah, let's go. I mean, oh, I did not sound funny. <laughs> I, that's I. I kind of like that. I like that design from Dragon's Dogma. I decided, what if I just made a really tall lady in Dragon's Dogma? And I'm like, I like how this looks. It's a it's an enjoyable play, player avatar to be. I don't know why. Maybe because you don't see, you just don't see it very often in games. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Whenever there's a really tall like lady in Final Fantasy or around like places I've been, everyone usually just looks up and go like, "Oh, big lady," and then it's like, "Whoa, hello, please give us." Okay. Anyways, I'm, I'm not dive into that. <laughs> no, no. Let's 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 just say we're, we're let's Angela. We're, gonna, we're coming at our time. I will say that. 
I, I wish that the five Final Fantasy fourteen characters were not trapped in an MMO. I kind of like them a lot more than Final Fantasy characters, and I wish they were in a different game sometimes. They didn't have to play, like, 30 hours between each cutscene or something. Um, it's okay, because, you know, if you have the funds, you can uh, 3D print your, your own character. I can get my own alpha now. Oh, what my goodness. <laughs> what a world we live in. Um... Speaking of worlds we live in, Angela, if you were to live in the world of baseball, what position would you be in? I would probably be one of the people out in the fields. Ah, because... yes. The ideal <laughs> position for someone who walks around the house occasionally and then watches a YouTube video. I would like to, you know, I would like to contribute, but sometimes not be too much in like the heat of the game. Yes, yes kind of trusting that the other players won't be strong enough to hit it all the way back there. That is true. It's like, go team. I will support you from the sidelines. Not really the side, but you, you know what I mean. I, yeah, the, the, they all feel with that. Angela, thank you. Um, we will be back with our final guest in about 30 seconds. Yeehaw. Experiment. Hello, and welcome back to Indie Apocalypse Radio. I was lamenting off camera that um, I, that FUBAR does not default to keeping it so that I stop after the current song. I have to keep selecting that option. Um, anyway, that was the Magnetic Fields with Experimental Music Love. Um, we are here with the final guest of the Chonkers HQ block. It is the programming lead and tech artist. Is Af oh, no, I screwed up. Anfernee, right? Hey, pretty good. Uh, it's uh, it's Anthony. Anthony, so okay. Uh, I, I, I'll I put it, I'll it. I put a little too much pepper on it. <laughs> I really. I don't it. mind the season then. Perfect. Okay. So anyway, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? Sorry. I'm doing uh pretty well. Pretty well. I uh woke up today, got out of bed, now I'm here. That's an ideal way to do it. <laughs> That's two important steps. That you should take every morning. Beyond yeah, you that, know, sometimes you just skip one of those and your day does not go so well. I really don't like when I skip the waking up first, but I do get out of bed. That's Yeah, it happens. And not an ideal way to go about things, but, you know. Well, now that you've awoken and gotten out of bed and presumably also moved to a computer or a phone with which you could speak to me on. Um, did you have breakfast today? Yeah, now that I'm speaking to you through my magic ball, I, I did have breakfast today. I had a nice little tuna sandwich. Okay. Butter up some uh, some buns with tuna and sandwich. Now a tuna sandwich. What kind of buns do you use for a tuna sandwich? Like, not, not, not you specifically. Wait, wait, what, what, what buns do I use for a tuna yeah, sandwich, but not me of... specifically? No, I, I, that was me uh, <laughs> stammering over my words and incorrectly backpedaling you you should have been mentally backspacing what i was saying that was me backspacing with my words um what kind of buns do you use you know i i am a man of buns i do enjoy my buns okay well let's we'll, we'll get in the bun talk in a second but let's just stick to the tuna for now so <laughs> give me <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I don't know. Did I lose you? Anthony, are you here? I'm going with All right. I, uh... When you talk about buns with me, you know, it's it's a, it's a whole nice story. But uh, today I was using brioche buns for my tuna sandwich. Okay. Put a little butter on it. Because that's what I was going to ask. Cause I feel like brioche has been really coming into style, you know? These last it's years a, or so. Yeah, it's you know, it's a, it's a, it's a cross on top, popping out. I feel like I've been like brioche buns are like, they have those like, Burger King chicken sandwiches now. That's true. I think it's just the fact that it's a uh, it's a nice robust bun, both shape very well. It does because I you know really as someone who is driving on the highway and driving my number one highway meal is fast food because um, I can get it. 
I really appreciate that I can actually hold a brioche bun and it's not like a gross bun that seeps through and it gets my hands all wet and sticky. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy eating and keeping my hands clean while also eating. I don't particularly enjoy spending the second half of my meal picking things out of the wrapper. Yeah. Sticking my face into it, you know? No, no. I mean, you don't just tear the wrapper open and just, like, eat from the wrapper? No, I definitely do when I have to. It's like, you know, when, you have, like, when you're have you opening a yogurt, right? You know, yeah. I got to lick, uh, lick the lid a little bit. It's the same thing, but uh, a little bit more grease. <laughs> it's just like mustard and pickles instead. Yeah. Now, other buns. Okay, so brioche. We got it. Brioche for tuna. Now, do you have like a very specific like this is my bun for this, this is my bun for that? Or do you kind of go with like these are the buns I'm into at the time? Would you would you call a sourdough baguette a like bun if, if, if say you cut it in half, right? And you yes. uh, put on some garlic, put on some butter some salt, pepper, some parsley, and make some garlic bread. Would you call that a bun? Okay, you're getting into the dangerous territory of asking what and what isn't what is not a sandwich, which I am of the prescription that sandwiches are whatever we, whatever one decides them to be. So I guess if you believe it's a bun, it's a bun. Then I guess uh, I would consider garlic bread with, uh, you know, my my preference of a sourdough to get cut in half. Okay. Would be my, my choice of bun for garlic bread. All right. So, so you're very much like a bun for the a bun for each season type of person. Yes, well, yes. Now, but okay, listen, we, uh, we we all know we all want to know about buns here, but I guess we should also talk to you about video games. I guess. I, I let suppose I, I let everyone else talk about video games. <laughs> Anthony, what do you think about video games? They're all right, you know. Okay. I think uh, they're they're pretty cool. Games are cool. What what game would you consider to be cool? What's a cool game to you? It's a cool game to me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So I've been playing a lot of a uh, Final Fantasy fourteen as well. Oh, I I think I've heard of that. I think it's. I, I, yeah, no. I think you know it's 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 definitely a game out there. Not not for everyone. It's it's a it's a pretty small game. Yeah, I th- I think it's like very like. It's for a variety of streamers, I believe. Not a, no one ever dedicates themselves to it. Yeah, it, it, it's a small niche of people. Yeah, who people who are into like bunnies and stuff like that. It seems like you know, it's, it seems yeah. like it's for kids, honestly, with all these animal people, you know. Yeah, it definitely, definitely, you know, bunnies and cats and stuff. Yeah, it seems like real kid stuff. I, Potatoes. It, it's like all refugees from Club Penguin went over to Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, I miss Club Penguin. <laughs> I wasn't too old for Club Penguin. What? Are, and now this is, I guess, a very important question. Anthony, what is Club Penguin? Uh, well, to me, that's a game where I learned how to play Moncala and okay. uh, Connect Four. And uh, I, I don't know. It's not much else to me. It, it's those two. Oh, and uh, it's a Puffle, Puffle Feeder. What is a Puffle? Sh- now, I know what Connect Four is. I know what Moncala is. Oh, it's like a little pet you can have in there. Um, okay. Really teaches me about uh, how, keeping something else alive. It's a uh, like it's 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 kind of game where you have to play it and experience it just like Neopets before you can like have a child. You know, okay, learn to take yeah. care of a little virtual pet. Perfect. I so so what you're saying is my experience of Neopets of playing it for a while and getting sick of it and not playing anymore when I grew up is perfectly prepared me for child rearing. Exactly. That's that's just all you need, really. Nothing else. The way I put the Neopets to work in a shop is is putting is setting up a Neopet shop. Is that like when people farm out their kids' reactions to things for content online? Yeah, basically. Okay. And uh, you know, setting your kid out to basically be there for content. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like a good reason to have kids. People love it when kids say like really smart things, you know, and they post about it on Twitter. So uh, most most people posting on Twitter. I, I it comes up occasionally, you know, where people are like, "Wow, my kid was like really said this insightful, inspiring thing," and it's like you probably you know like, rereading from a script. <laughs> yeah, did this child say that? Are you are you lying? <laughs> hey, the impressive thing is that that child can read from the script in the first place. Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. 
well, it's, you know, it's all Hollywood. Yeah, you you guys all know that out there in California. It's all Hollywood life, you know? You gotta, yeah. You got to live in an influencer house. Are you looking forward to living in an influencer house one day? I'm just looking forward to living in a house in general one day. What? It's well, rough out here. I live, with, I live in that stuff, man. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> I hear this, the exodus to Oakland is right has already risen up prices all around the SF area. So there's no houses to be found. Yeah, it'd be like that. Oh, might actually just moving to the middle of nowhere. They'll give you houses out there. Yeah, well, it's at our Chonkers HQ headquarters in Texas or something. Yeah, yeah, or like Kansas. What's a Kansas? It's like a it's like a state, you know. It's um, there's some people in there. It's got a capital. You can drive through it. You can fly over it. That kind of thing. Is it uh, related to our Kansas? I think so. I think they. I think they used. I think they used to be one big state, and then they split them up into Kansas and our Kansas. Oh, it's like a North and South, like yeah, Dakota. Yeah, it used to be like. I think it used to be like Kansas, our Kansas, because they named that makes it after, sense. And then they're like, no. We don't like each other anymore. Um, let's let's break them up. Too big, and so now we just have Kansas and our Kansas. It's a whole. People got to read their U.S. history a lot more. There's a lot of interesting information in there that just gets lost in dealing sure. with state history and that sort of thing. But so um, so, I gotta ask you one one real. Sh- shop question so tech artist what is tech artist as someone who's uh, like a real solo diy kind of guy tech artist what does that mean it's a uh, it's a little misleading i i cannot do i cannot do art yeah. um i think uh it's, it's a term i learned kind of recently ish um i think i was looking for like a title to kind of like um cover the basis of what i was doing for the team um, and for my team specifically, for Chonkers, I was working on mostly of the artists on, and the uh, composers and sound designers on getting the stuff into the game, um, as well as a narrative writer. So, like, making sure, like, things that are supposed to be in the game are in the game. And, like, it's mostly just like, oh, is this animation programmed correctly? Yeah. And stuff like that. Is it is it playing in the correct order? And uh, for most most of the year, things are not playing in the correct order because uh, <laughs> I uh, did not put the the frames in the right order, and that's on me as a tech artist. Um, uh, and learning to do that is uh, my job as a tech artist, basically getting yeah. things uh, incorrectly. Yes, I have definitely seen the difficulties of someone back back to that Luda Global Game Jam, in which I was a producer accidentally. There was art that was. Um, the spine would bend backwards or something and the bottom torso would like fold. It was a real mess and nobody knows why it was happening. And then they ended up getting sprites off the unity store or assets off the unity store. Maybe I don't remember. It was a real, nothing came of it. It was a complete disaster, but we said, placeholder assets are fine. Are fun though. Yeah. Now is it, it's a 2D game. Now, are they 2D assets or are they um, like faux 2D assets? Um, they're they're 2D assets. Um, our game is it's an isometric game, so it's uh, in 2.5D. So it has a sort of like 3D perspective, but all the assets themselves are in 2D. Okay. I never know. If sometimes people like our like it looks 2D adjacent, but like really, there's something 3D hiding under there. Or I also I don't know how Unity handles things necessarily because I don't use it. Yeah, Unity definitely does not handle <laughs> um, things like the uh, isometric perspective and all the things like um, correct linear algebra very well. Those are things that uh, the programming department and are and Eli actually who uh worked pretty hard on making sure that things are bouncing correctly off walls. Yeah. Um and that was that basically took the entire year to get correct. Um and down to a point where it actually looks and feels right. 
which is kind of important considering it's like the thing the whole thing yeah that's the game <laughs> if you if you don't bounce things off of walls properly you just kind of have a weird baseball thing i guess but we are i kept track of it this time i paid attention Anthony, we're approaching the end of our time here together. But oh man, you'll be back very soon because the whole the whole party is right after you. So you're you and I are aren't going to be a lot away for very long. That's good. But um, where do you want to go, Luke? You know what I'm talking about. Tell me on the field where you want to be. So I had a first choice that was taken already by Angela J. And the reason for that is because uh yeah, the purple in the apocalypse cover in the back is uh, very pretty and I wanted to be very close to it. Uh unfortunately and Angela J already took that slot. Um therefore I will take the uh guy in full white near third base who is looking looking longingly in that direction instead. I uh, hate I hate Okay, I will move you over there, and we will be back in about 34 seconds with, like, 50% of Chonkers HQ, which really, for this show, is a lot of people. Uh, goodbye. Huh, huh, all right. Hello, and welcome back to Indie Apocalypse Radio. That was I'll Race Reprise by Brendan Small, as performed by Ishan Benjamin from home movies um i forgot that i had that soundtrack on my computer um but hello everybody's here they're all together once again finally hello everyone yeah hello hello so hello, <laughs> vanish gone to the ether perhaps <laughs> who knows f and chat Let's pour pour out our apps. What a what a weird thing to become such a cultural legacy for us all. Definitely. I I think I feel like someone pointed out fairly recently how absurd it is that press F to pay respects is survived for so long, but it's it's perfect really. It's couldn't wish for a better piece of game design than that. It really game design peaked at, at that moment in history. Yeah, I, I don't know how we can ever come back from it. But um, F to Angela D, thank you for, for being here. Maybe she will return, but we never know. But um, we've got everyone here, the whole otherwise crew. And you know what? Does anyone have anything um, extremely pressing that I have to say? Because otherwise, I'm just going to... This is going to be... Uh, I'm going to wrap it up i'm tired <laughs> i just realized like in the last 30 seconds i'm like i've been talking for so long i'm so tired does thank anyone have you, thank you for talking no no thank you all for being here that is like maybe the fact that i woke up at 3 a.m and then have been busy and driving for four hours just hit me like a brick or multiple oh. bricks, like a lot of bricks. I think like a whole sack of them. Um, so does anyone have any, um, anything they want to say? Any questions for anyone else? Any questions for the general show? Any burning statements? Any? Let me check to see if there are questions that came in. Uh, there were none when I, at the, when I started and there remain to be none, but I wouldn't take it personally. There are usually none. <laughs> it's okay. We are we are free spirits. Oh, perfect. We can talk about many things. What would you like to talk about? Oh, uh, well, well, sorry, Anthony. I I get to be next to the cute purple purple picture on the on the field. If I'll, day, I'll never forgive you for this. <laughs> <laughs> on the on the baseball field, the indie apocalypse issue with the purple. The purple lady. That's issue sixteen, I believe. Oh. Art by Cam I forget her last name. Um, but K 
cam. I will find it because I always hate letting people down like that. It's very that pretty. Yeah, it's very. One of the other issues that uh, really uh, intrigued me is the, is the eyeball looking one. <laughs> Uh, mostly because it reminds me of a certain dragon's eye in, in Final Fantasy XIV, which I ah, have yes. really enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never seen that before. I don't because I always I'm used to like the big blown up version where it's like a big dude's face with that's his mouth, and he's got little eyes on the side. We're talking about the red one, right? Yeah, I can see the face now, but like from a distance, you can see that it looks like an eye. Yeah, you know, it's your yes. If that's your first time seeing it, it's this really scr like crunched down <laughs> version of it. Mm -hmm. Let me, but you know what? Through the magic of OBS, I can just do this. Whoop! There he is. Oh goodness! There's the full version of him. Hey, how are you doing? Um, <laughs> Whoa! Just yeah. just chilling out. He's just chilling out, so everyone can see. <laughs> A big blown up version of it, but uh, <laughs> no, no, get out of here, Bank of America logo. <laughs> this this is the new logo. They're simplifying all their designs, but yeah. some people are bucking the trend of simplification and instead making monsters with uh, mouths for faces. That would make me want to, you know, trust my money with Bank of America. If, if, it feels like they have nothing to lose at that point, you know. A good time a, to experiment. Yeah, I need. A, I need. I, I'm what I'm looking for. Banks is experimentation. I just don't. I, I don't want just a building that holds my money. I want them to get real wild with it. Oh wait a minute. <laughs> uh, but uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess. I guess. Uh, so so what time did we all sleep, fellas? You know when I knocked that. I was I like, what? Well, <laughs> yeah. oh, I see. Oh yeah, it's because I was, I was, a, uh, I was grinding, in in fourteen, a little bit. Anyways, uh, Anyways. take care of your sleep schedules. Don't feel like you sleep at like three, four, five a.m. Yeah, yes. Then take care. Take. Do I have that? I should. I should get that that thing and throw it while I'm getting real punchy and throwing stuff up on the stream. I should, I must, I might've posted at some point that whole Shigeru Mizuki, the power of sleep. Oh, it's a yeah, very, sleep is powerful. It's very good. It's an exceptionally good comic. If you're familiar with Shigeru Mizuki, he did, um, Kitaro among other things. Oh, that sounds very familiar. I think there isn't. I think they just put out a new Kataro show. Like recently. But One thing I don't, to check out. I don't know. I don't keep track of anime. I don't even yeah, know what it is. Seems like a lot of fancy words for cartoons, you know? <laughs> but. Why do I post so much stuff on here? What am I doing? That is a question we all ask ourselves. <laughs> what are we doing online? Why do we post? Ah, I do have it. What? A, I Luckily, I know how to search. If college taught me anything, it is learning how to research things and properly search for information. Maybe oh, yeah. a pro with that kind of thing. But Get those detective skills going. Yes. Um, baseball detective, is that anything? I just... Okay. Our, our new DLC, Homer Miko becomes Detective Miko. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. What if... How, how would, <laughs> I got a question for the Chonkers HQ. How would you solve a uh, mystery with baseball? That's an interesting question. I've been watching a lot of Detective Conan, so I could probably I could probably design some sort of... <laughs> murder mystery but i don't even know how you'd solve it with baseball he does he not i guess he solves all his mysteries with soccer yeah he does soccer 
I guess you could you could do the same thing he does, just with like he hits the bad guys with the baseball. Yeah, a real little slugger kind of guy. Bunk. <laughs> a shonen bat, if you will. But uh, here is the, the teacher, the Mizuki. It's just telling. They're all bragging about how they work all day, and he's like, <laughs> "I lived to be ninety, and they all died at fifty. Sucks to be you oh guys." My gosh. And it's, that that is true in a sense, you know. Got to take care of your body while you while you can. Yeah, it's like you realize, especially if you like, it's easy to get like obsessed about like becoming, you know. Oh, I need to become successful now. I need to have my work done now. If I don't get it done now, who will respect me? I'll I'll never get it done. I need. If I'm not a thirty under thirty, what am I doing with my life? Oh gosh. So how many of you are 30 under 30? There's at least three of you, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If, I have yeah. $30. <laughs> yeah, my bank account's giving me the under $30 notification. Uh, I have at least I know what that emails. means, so I'm definitely not in there. Under 30, under 30. Under 30. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think 30 under 30, I think you have to be actually like um, uh, very wealthy to be a 30 under 30 because they ask you to go to New York or something and they don't pay for any of your stuff. Oh, oh no! Wow. But I guess that's just... the test. If you can afford a flight to New York and a hotel stay there. You're probably rich enough to be thirty under thirty. Yeah, you're you're a podcast magnet or whatever you need to be. That ship has sailed for myself. But listen, well, you can just be a person who makes good stuff, but it's not as snappy because you don't say the same number twice. But, I mean, you could add two numbers to whatever description you want, right? I suppose you could. Hmm. I suppose you could. So we can... What if you're all... What if we did the hundo under hundo and just, like... It covers everybody, pretty much, except for, like, those five guys hanging around that are all over 100 years old. Well, actually, I mean, what you could do is... um for indie apocalypse it's like you know it's a group of games yeah. you could market it as like this many games under this many dollars that's two numbers back to back right <sighs> 10 under 20 yeah mm, maybe maybe i gotta trick people into buying it somehow <laughs> <laughs> gotta gotta get the get the bucks from people somehow but... just make them think that they're buying a license for winrar everyone does that oh I'll yeah, it'll pop up. I'll let them download a demo, and then I can ask them to upgrade. Yeah. Oh, would you like to upgrade to the um the official version of Indiepocalypse, please? Oh. The official version. I could just make. Who knows? Anyway, 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 anyhow. I'm sorry. I thought, I thought about when you said five guys. I thought about like the burger chain. <laughs> I suddenly got hungry. Oh, we're going back to buns. I was... Ooh, <laughs> five guys. I was thinking about Five Guys as well because I remember the last time I took a trip to where I had just taken the trip to that I stopped halfway to, at a Five Guys, but I realized that I must have got off the, on the highway at some point because I didn't pass by one this time. Wow. And so I had to go to Burger King. I didn't get to hang around their barrels full of peanuts. <laughs> the peanut and, yeah, the, fry, the oil. I actually had Five Guys for like the first time last month. It was very interesting. It's, it's it um, is a burger. Yes, <laughs> I was gonna say it's <laughs> it's it's just a hamburger, really. Oh um, man! Like the thing about ordering Five Guys in like the pandemic is that you know, I've been inside for so long, I forgot how to go into a store and order like something from a person, <laughs> <laughs> because the cashier was like, "What would you like?" and I and I was like, "Oh, I like a." Okay, I forgot like the the menu items, but I like a, like a small, like a small <laughs> cheeseburger or something. You know, and <laughs> it's it's the wheat product thing. It's got two of them. You put some meat in between of them. What do they call it? Yeah, right. I think that's a French fry. I think it's named <laughs> after some place in Germany. They're like, oh, what what do you want on your burger? And I'm like, I I don't know. <laughs> Mike. It's just like me looking at like the side for like two minutes. French fries? <laughs> oh. <laughs> but... 
I also... I like some french fries and some mayo. Oh, JK, I... not something I would put on my burger, but let's just say I would like everything. I've never had mayo on a burger, and I don't think I've good. Had. You ever had a guac on a burger? Uh, I believe so. I've had a lot of gourmet burgers, and they get real ex they get real experimental with those. I don't know gourmet burgers I've worth. It's interesting that you don't put mayo on a burger, but like on sandwiches, mayonnaise is like top dog. It's like it's in every condiment that you're putting on sandwiches. You got like garlic aioli. It's like it's got mayonnaise in it, right? Yeah. I think maybe because the, the meat is already wet enough. And I think mayo wet stuff up for you. That makes sense. Perhaps. I never thought about mayo's utility as making it more moist. I just think of it because if you don't eat it fast enough, it gets all soggy because of all the mayo. Uh -huh. But sandwich talk. Um, I had In and Out once when I went to Indiecade. Once. Once. And that was also very much like it was just the hamburger, and I even got it animal style as you're told to do. <laughs> oh wow! And it was. I got the gold onions. And I was like, oh, that was a hamburger, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Why is the line so big? Uh, price? It is very affordable. Yeah, I think the price is... Oh, okay. Yeah. That would make sense if you could get cheap hamburgers and put them in a little cup and get little ketchup cups. Oh, you all, I am so... I want to go out and see the world. I want to travel again. I do too. I want to fly. Conventions. I want to fly across the country. One day. Where specifically do you want to go? It's just kind of anywhere. I actually don't have any attachment to specific kinds of places. I just like not being where I am. Not because I dislike necessarily where I am, but mostly because I just like to be in other places sometimes. Yeah, it's good to just you know go out and explore. Yeah, I definitely like leaving my room and entering the living room. It's cool to be in a new place every <laughs> once in a while. Yeah, because you, you can see the world in like a perspective that you've never seen it before. Fresh faces of whoever lives with you. <laughs> it was. Um, so... Pass by the people in the kitchen at 3 a.m. when you're trying to get a quick bite to eat. <laughs> and they're like, why are they also in the kitchen at 3 a.m.? <laughs> Is that like Spider-Man meme where they point at each other? Yeah. It's like, oh, we're both grinding, as it turns out. <laughs> we just need different things. Um, so like we're going to... We're going to wrap this up as it crests into an hour and a half. I'm trying to shut it down around an hour and a half now to keep it like real digestible. Rather than like the three hour <laughs> treks they used to be. So, we don't have a, a big circle to go around, and mostly you're all from the same thing anyway. So, somebody is put their phone, their microphone inside of the shower, <laughs> and they need to calm down with that. <laughs> the wrong kind of stream. It's not that kind of stream, you know? Um, anyway, what 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 does a Chonkers HQ have to plug? What have you got to promote? Anyone can. Play Final Fantasy fourteen. You will not regret it. No, we're not being paid for that. Let them pay <laughs> us, and then we can start shilling their product. We got our own game. Yeah, so before you play, play Home Run Miko, 14, you will not regret it. Play the critically acclaimed hit MMO, Home Run Miko. It's not actually an MMO, but it's actually a puzzle action game about throwing baseballs, but they're not baseballs, they're bunnies, and putting them into plates, but they're not plates, they're shrines. Um, and you'll you'll figure it out. It's a fun one. You got yeah. a banger of a soundtrack made, like, made by yours truly points at the my teammates here. Yeah, points <laughs> You can't see me. <laughs> I, I can shake them around a little. Hey, look, woo! That's the closest <laughs> I can get to pointing. Real, real, <laughs> real blow them up. There we are. Oh Composer. Oh, you look, go, look, you go. Look at that. <laughs> look at those different layers. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. 
You gotta leave it big for him. He likes it. Yeah, I, I mean, when we were discussing the credits, I was saying that my name should really be the only name on there, just because I'm like important as like a human being, maybe not as like contributing to the project. So, so, if, so if people were online it. and they wanted to find Eli's home run Miko. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the new they... name of it. We're rebranding. Eli where, Miko. Where Eli would they find HQ. it? You can visit Chonkers HQ. Dot itch dot io and that has not only home run miko but our april fools build um known as miko gun and look at that perfect and let me do that the thing where i do now where i push it in the chat look at that i'm a real pro with this now um for my part i will say hey um get out of here you lie shrink no <laughs> stealing all my get back to the stands get over there with your little yellow shirt guy. Here we go. Whoop. now the star of the show is here it's me he goes yeet um i gotta say <laughs> hey you should um i recommend you check out any apocalypse i think it's cool um you should if you can pay money for it it's i like to receive money and also, um, I like to send money along to the developers. Paying me is how I can continue to make this game thing forever, you know? And I want to keep doing it, and I want to keep supporting people because I think it's neat. And I'm, I got very sentimental on my Amaze stream. I'm going to try and not do that here because this is a real... I can't... I gotta keep my illusions of a real cool guy here. You have to like imagine me with pop leather collars, just like strutting around the podcast studio, being dark cool sunglasses for, for video games. I have sunglasses. And I I prop them up every now and then to give someone a look like, "Hey, you're cool." And then I put them <laughs> back down. I never put them on the back of my head. Do people put sunglasses on the back of their head in California? Um, only people who wear Oakleys. Okay. Okay, they do it everywhere around here, no matter the kind of sunglasses. I hate it. It makes me want to throw myself into the ocean. But, um, speaking of throwing things into the ocean, you should throw your games into the ocean of Indiepocalypse submissions by going to indiepocalypse.com slash submit. Um, you should also... Um, some, what am I talking about? Oh, Patreon. IndiePocalypse.com slash Patreon. If you want to hear this show, if you came in last minute, you're like, wow, there's like six people here and they all sound like they're having a great time, but I missed out on it. I wish I could hear them chat about things such as brioche buns, producing video games, the, the critically acclaimed Final Fantasy 14, and it's all about its free trials. And all sorts of other miscellaneous things. You can hear that all on Patreon by subscribing at levels. You know what people sound like when they're telling you about your Patreon tiers. I hate... I don't want to sound like that. For some reason, it bothers me to hear myself sound like that, so I just don't do it. But, you know, there's tiers. They offer different things. You pay me different amounts of money as you get stuff. If you pay me $25, I send you a physical copy of the zine. I think it's cool. Um, there's a... Um, if you have a PlayStation 2 and want to make an RPG with me and a bunch of other strangers, go to IndiePocalypse.com slash RPG Maker and sign up to make a game in RPG Maker 2. We each t spend a month working on it, and then we mail the game and the memory card to the next person. I want to do that because I think it's fun. And um, if you're here and you got all the Twitch thing, the Prime thing, just click on that Prime button for me, and I get $3. And you shoot the other three dollars in the space with Jeff Bezos, and that I'm sorry, folks. I make I don't make the rules. That's just how the money gets spent. Um, and that's it. I think, I think, 
Um, tell your friends that this um, Twitch channel exists because in September there's going to be a pledge drive for Indie Apocalypse where I try and break even. And if people don't show up, it'll be very bleak. But I can at least put hosted eight hour live stream onto my resume. That's it, everyone. On behalf of myself, goodbye, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Having us. Thank you. Thanks all. Uh, we're gonna go out with the the unofficial theme song. Don't tell Sydney. It's Sydney Gish's <laughs> imposter syndrome. It, nope. I gotta go back to studio mode. I got too too much playing around. Goodbye.